this is the last video on nutrition. We're just gonna wrap up some loose ends. We'll start with what we call trace elements. Trace elements are gonna be things like iodine and zinc, copper, things like that. Iodine, seen in seafood, really important for thyro thyroid function. If you don't have enough iodine, which isn't a big problem here because we put iodine in our salt, but if you don't have it enough, you get hypothyroidism, you get a goiter, which is the most common cause of a goiter and hypothyroidism in the developing world and worldwide is just iodine deficiency. You get that goiter, you get that hypothyroidism. More, common, more commonly seen in mountainous areas because there's no seafood there. Zinc does hundreds of things. This includes working in DNA as transcription factors, It's seen in collagen, collagen, and also is found in semen. Deficiency causes poor wound healing. Hypogonadism. And finally, you get this rash, usually around your face and your bum, called acrodermatitis enteropathica. Acrodermatitis. That's iodine, that's zinc, copper. We've already touched on it. If you have a deficiency in copper, it affects your collagen synthesis. Do you remember what enzyme uses copper? That is your lysosyl oxidase. That does it for our trace elements. We're just gonna jump into another loose end and that is chronic malnutrition. Chronic malnutrition is broken into two main categories. One is just total calorie deficit and then one is more protein deficit. Total calorie deficit is called marasmus. Spill it out. And there's a lot of muscle wasting. So think marasmus M for muscle. Protein deficit has another fancy name called Qua Shorkar. Qua Shorkar. This is what you see in those commercials when they're asking you to donate, you know, food for children that are starving. They have really skinny limbs, but they have a really distended belly. Why is that? Because you're lacking protein. You're not making apo, lipo proteins, the carrier for fat. So all that fat gets stored in your liver, liver, fat, or fatty liver. Also because you're not making those proteins in your blood, you have decreased plasma oncotic pressure. And so fluid will leave your blood vessels, causing edema, causing that distended belly that you see in patients with Quashtor Car. Understand? That's all I wanna talk about on that subject. And then our final subject is alcoholism or alcohol in general. Way back many, many moons ago, I think that might've been our first video, we talked about fat, carbs, protein, how much calories were in them. Do you remember what calories per gram were in carbs and protein? Those are four. Calorie, calories per gram, do you remember fat? That was nine. Alcohol is somewhat split in the middle. That's seven calories a gram. You need to know the biochem pathway of alcohol, how we use it, 
how we break it down. Alcohol or ethanol gets worked on by alcohol dehydrogenase with its friend NAD plus turns out to NADH. That eventually becomes a acetal aldehyde. And acetaldehyde is very just toxic. Our body hates it. We eventually break that down by acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, again with a friend NAD plus, making NADH. That leads us to our last product, acetate. That is the gist of alcohol metabolism. However, depending on how much alcohol you consume or how often, sometimes you recruit friends. In chronic alcoholics, you'll recruit a friend to help you break ethanol down to acetaldehyde. And that friend is going to be the enzyme CYP2E1. In the microsomes, of your, surprise, surprise, liver. So in chronic alcoholism, in chronic alcoholism, you recruit that enzyme, recruit that friend in the microsome of your liver. Something you should know is that that releases a lot of radical species, free radicals, and there's a theory that because you release those free radicals in your liver, that's why alcoholism can cause hepatic damage, or one of the reasons why alcohol can cause hepatic damage. Another, another friend you can recruit to turn ethanol to acetaldehyde is going to be catalase. And catalase is found in the peroxisomes of your brain. A theory, just a theory, is that by recruiting your brain to help you metabolize alcohol, it can create products that make addiction possible, alcoholic addiction possible, because it occurs in your brain. In alcoholics, they might not drink alcohol or ethanol. They might be desperate and try and drink other things like windshield wiper fluid. And that comes in the form of methanol. And methanol, has a very similar pathway but much more toxic byproducts. It gets worked on by alcohol dehydrogenase, but instead of instead of forming acetaldehyde, it forms formaldehyde toxic, toxic. And that gets worked on by aldehyde dehydrogenase to form formate, which is another toxic substance that can cause eye damage. But that is both regular drinking alcohol and sometimes you'll see, especially in the ER, um, chronic alcoholics or desperate alcoholics drinking things that they shouldn't be aware of that pathway also. One more, th one more thing before we go. I just want to touch on a few drugs that we can give to patients to help in their alcoholism. One, acutely, if they've had an overdose of alcohol, if they're if you're worried about alcoholic poisoning, we can give a drug that blocks this first step. That is from Mepazole. Mepazole blocks alcohol dehydrogenase stuffs from making those really toxic compounds. Another drug we can use is on the last enzyme. There's only two enzymes, only two drugs you need to know about. This is your disulfiram. That's kind of funny. Why would we block that? Why would we build up acetaldehyde? That's not something we want. Well, that's exactly why we give disulfiram. That's exactly 
what we want for these patients. It gives such an unpleasant feeling to have all this every time you drink that it should make the patients want to stop drinking as much, maybe cut down on their drinking. That's why we give disulfiram to build up those nasty byproducts. That does it for alcohol. That also does it for our nutrition block. In our next topic, we're going to start on cell biology. See you next time.